we got a simple message, simple request. Come to encourage you to flex your muscle and uh, make the world a better place. And uh, I've come to the right audience because that's what you do already. It's who you are. I don't think much of what I'm going to say to you is going to be much of a challenge or, or a surprise or really an affront to your values. I come to you as a leader of this organization because I think this is, this is meant for us. I think this action is exactly tied to who and what we are. So let's start with the what of it. Um, you're sitting there, you see this card, it might be stuck to your butt, <laughs> but it's crush big soda, take action. This is us, this is you, this is, this, is, this is the affiliates and I and staff. And when you go there, read what it's trying to do. It's supporting Senate Bill 203, which has to get through a health committee, California Senate Bill 203, which uh, has to get through a health and an appropriations committee. And quite simply, it puts a warning label on sugary uh, beverages. And that warning speaks of um, obesity, diabetes, and tooth decay. Just that simple. We're in a district here where we have 20 affiliates and 20 dialysis centers. Dialysis is it's end stage renal disease. Your kidneys don't work anymore. That's, uh, that's significant because CrossFit is in a race with, di with dialysis centers uh, all, over the, all over the country, uh, maybe, uh, maybe in the world. There are 6,700 dialysis centers in the United States and there are 7,200 CrossFit gyms. We were told at Harvard that we were the fastest growing chain of our size in world history. That nothing had ever, all the things bigger than us never grew at the rate we're growing. And yet the dialysis centers are keeping abreast. Now I'm not here to ban Coke or Pepsi. And not just because I can't, because we can't. I, I, I don't know if I could stop, I would stop it if I could. Eh, maybe I would, but I think it'd be wrong to maybe because I've got those values, right? I don't want to control what anyone does. But I do think that, that sugar is a toxin. And I think that soda, canned soda, bottled soda, that the American Beverage Association and their constituent members' products are, are the best example of the toxicity of sugar, the destructive power of high glycemic carbohydrate. And and you all are the representatives, the, both the work product and the purveyors of a, of a, of a uh, fitness concept that knows that damn well. You know the destructive impact of sugar, not, not because of the amount of sugar and the damage you see done around you, but because of what's happened to yourselves and your charges when you've decided to ignore that part of lifestyle. You've seen the healing, you've seen the change, you've seen the transformation. So I, I've got to be careful here, and this is, a, this is a CrossFit audience, I'm not going to preach to the choir. It's a toxin, and so what are you going to do about it? We know that at fractions of the average consumptive rate in the United States, it's enough to cause chronic disease in about 20% of the population. We know that 70% of, of the 1.5 million Americans that are going to die in 2015, 1.2 million of them are going to die from uh, chronic disease. I'm of the view that the soda consumption is playing a significant role in that. I understand, now do I want to ban soda? No. I don't think we could. If I could, I wouldn't. It's not what I'm looking for. But I do think that it needs to ha contain warning very much like uh, uh, cigarettes and like alcohol, just like that. And I also know that won't put them out of business. I know that for a fact. The funny thing about warning labels and what we really want is a culture shift. I was looking, I've been, we've been talking a lot about it. You know, I'm a libertarian. I don't, I don't want to ban anything. I don't want to force people to do anything. But, but uh, I was looking at where you see warning labels. And where do we find them? They're on the gas can. Apparently, if you pour the shit on you and light your lighter, it wouldn't be good for you. It's on the can, right? It's on the ladder. If you climb up the thing and fall off, apparently you could get hurt. That's what it says on the ladder. I have a, uh, uh, solar panels at my house. 
and the high voltage panel inside has a picture of someone getting electrocuted. This is danger, like if it looks dangerous too. <laughs> I, I, the labels are only on the things that we know are dangerous already. In a way, it's almost like you don't need them. But see, I don't, know, I don't know if like chicken and egg kind of thing, I don't know what comes first, if we appreciate what the problem is with soda and then put the label on, or if the putting the label on helps everyone appreciate, I think there's some of both. There's some tail wagging the dog, dog wagging the tail, you get that? But I know that, it, that you know, for instance, in children's hospitals, how can you have, be of the view that, that sugar is a pediatric toxin when in a children's hospital you can go down in the cafeteria and purchase it? It's a little weird, right? So that's, that's preaching to the choir. Let's go to the second family of reasons. You ready? Second one, corruption of science. Big soda, we've watched Pepsi and we've watched Coke have their way with the American College of Sports Medicine in such a manner that I'm ashamed of my industry. I don't know of anything that isn't, that, 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 that isn't CrossFit that isn't soda contaminated or irrelevant. Here's the State of the Union. You're either CrossFit supported, backed, involved, or you're entirely irrelevant, or you got big soda backing. This includes the American College of Sports Medicine, the NSCA, Mixify, Global Energy Balance Network, Exercises Medicine, all of what has been, and I don't know if any of you have seen, but there's been a, a, an enormous storm of news um, globally about the, the corruption of the, of the health sciences by soda. Your leadership, CrossFit Inc., we dug in and challenged Gatorade and the Gatorade Sports Science Institute and the American College of Sports Medicine on the singular, singular subject of hydration, thermoregulatory science and hydration science. And it, 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 was, it was quite a battle. And why did we do this? We did this because, because people that were saying CrossFit was dangerous had a legacy, and they had a legacy of uh, hydration science promoted through the American College of Sports Medicine that proved to be fatal. Gatorade, Pepsi, hired scientists that came to the conclusion that you needed to drink 40 ounces of fluid, preferably an electrolyte containing fluid like this one here, per hour during endurance activities. And around the world, we had scientists going, well, that will kill, let's see, small women that are slow. They said women only because they tend to be smaller. You're trying to picture someone about 50, 50 kilograms was the thought. And they go, that'd be female marathoners. And, and slow, not, they, won't, they, they, they won't die because they're slow, but because they're slow, it'll take more time and they'll have, be forced to drink more along these fatal guidelines. And guess what happened? They were perfectly fatal. And they continue to kill today, even though hydration guidelines have been changed. And I think nothing speaks to the travesty more than what the end result is, what it took six, what, what, the, what the fruit of six people, two years, two million dollars. We're spending your money again, by the way. In your name again, by the way. Here's the, here's the correction of the scientific record of the science on hydration. Not 40 ounces of water or as much as tolerable. That was deadly and a lie. It was this, drink when you're thirsty, don't when you're not. Imagine if I had told you some formula that you're supposed to use to, to pee or to breathe, and it turned out that it was actually fatal. And then finally we had to tell you, okay, here's the truth. Pee when you have to, don't when you can't, when you don't, you know, I mean, it's like, gee, Riz, it's really that bad? Yeah, it's really that bad. That's how deep, that's how powerful, that's how crappy the corruption is in the, in the industry. And that's, that's a fitness corruption, it's also a health science corruption. And just as this thing's dying off, what comes up next? The Global Energy Balance Network and Exercises Medicine. The corruption is amazing. And it's the corruption of academia, it's the corruption of industry, the corruption of government. The wholesale corruption by Big Soda, by American Beverage Association, and its constituent members has been devastating. Devastating. 
nothing has been hit harder in terms of just being taken over completely um, by big soda than the fitness industry. Fitness got fucked by soda pop. Absolutely devastated. Devastated. Most of what we believe was dead wrong because of soda. Uh, the low fat, high carb, that's them. It ain't us. The ACSM is still pushing a reduced fat fare. They're still hyperhydrating. The corruption. It's, it's, it's beyond the pale. I, told, I, I announced publicly I'm going to drive, we are going to drive, my community is going to drive soda pop out of sports medicine and by extension the health sciences. I added that by extension the health sciences because we, we, won't, we won't get them. If, they're, if, they're, if they can pay off the pediatricians and the cardiologists, we'll never get them out of fitness. And so we got to do this for everyone all at once. Look what we're doing. We're driving them out. That's what it looks like. And we're going to keep driving them out. So the shit's just toxic. Their corruption has been, has been absolutely just uh, like unforgivable. Here's the third one. <laughs> CrossFit is in a battle with the NSCA and the ACSM, and both of them are, are heavily supported by Big Soda. And so what we've come to find is while you've been working hard unlocking the doors at 5 a.m., and I realize that means you get up at 4, I know what that lifestyle is like, while this has been going on, there's been a conspiracy, if you will, of people like the ACSM, the NSCA, and uh, U.S. reps and IC reps. They've been lobbying, they've been legislating, they've been conducting a public relations campaign that has, mount, that has, that has resulted in 19 pieces of legislation, that this was their campaign to label you dangerous. Um, CrossFit has enemies. It starts with the American College of Sports Medicine. It works by connection to that, their twin pillar and friends, the NSCA. It includes these organizations that the ACSM has, and Coke have started, like Global Energy Balance Network. It includes Exercises Medicine and Mixify and the American Beverage Institute for Wellness and the American Beverage Association and uh, the weak these are all like 501c3s and there's just so many of them. Well, they lie about CrossFit, they lobby against CrossFit, and they started legislating. Oh, US reps, IC reps. Now, in full disclosure here, but like, it come as no surprise, we are suing uh, several of them to wonderful effect. We're turning them inside out through deposition, through discovery. Um, uh, we're learning some beautiful, beautiful things. So, so just from, from my first consideration was toxicity. Fair enough, right? You understand, I'm not calling for a ban. I don't envision it banned. I don't want it banned. I'm not, I'm not a ban things guy. I'm a tell the truth guy. Okay, it's toxic. Second, the corruption. Here's my thought, and we've seen it already. You know all the give the money back, give the money back? They're giving the money back because of the toxicity, because we're making the point. Wait a minute, you're taking money from people that are selling a toxic product. You're right, we shouldn't do that. Here, take the money back. So the corruption of science ends when we taint the dollars. We taint the dollars by pointing to the toxicity. Nothing says toxic like toxic on the can. Third, fucking with you. It's an amazing scenario. You are, CrossFitters, are the leading force in the world today in the war on chronic disease. In fact, you're the only front where anything positive is happening, anything viral is happening, where it is a, where it is a spontaneous, self-sustaining, growing community challenging, successfully fighting chronic disease. It is you and you alone. And I'm going to tell you that the American Beverage Association is the enemy. That's the other side of the whole effort. It's that simple. Whatever they want, I don't want. Whatever's bad for them is good for us. Now listen, I'm not here talking to you tonight about um, Jack Daniels or methamphetamine. Also toxic. I'm not here talking to you about uh, uh, the cartel's corruption of politicians. We know that happens, right? But I'm not here. Why? Because they're not targeting you. But if it turns out that the meth dealers end up taking control of your local state senator, 
and they start passing bills that target your training, we'll be up here doing the same goddamn thing on the meth subject. You with me? Because <laughs> I, got, I got all I need. I want them out of, this, out of sports medicine. And we won't do it unless we can get them out of the health sciences simultaneously. We've got to push them back. They need to be the same place that, that, that the distilleries are, that booze is, and it, that tobacco is. That's fair, right? I'm being cool, right? <laughs> Come on, I don't want to be heavy-handed on this. You're worth fighting for, right? So those are the three good reasons. I think they're good reasons. What you're doing is you are the only serious affront to chronic disease in the world today. The only one. Where did I get that idea? We've lived it. But more interestingly, I was recently approached by an MD, PhD named Axel Fluger, a PhD in pharmacology, a nephrologist, director of, of chronic disease and diabetes treatment at the Mayo Clinic for 16 years, 15 years of which they were the best diabetes treatment center in the world. He came to me saying, and I've dreamed about an organization existing like CrossFit and it's come to be. You are the only serious threat to chronic disease in the world today. Medicine has no answer, he said, none, because the causes of chronic disease are smoking, inactivity, and poor diet. And there is no medical solution for that. How do you like that? So you see, anything that's anti-affiliates is pro-chronic disease. And I hate it. I hate it. Thank you. I think I know what you're going to do. Hey, if, it, if it's not making sense, don't do it. But if you don't, I'm, I'm, I'm leading a coalition of the willing only. And I'm proud of you for it. Thank you and good night. <laughs>